Can you please summarize the main findings of the study? Yes, actually there are several important findings. We're particularly interested in asthma and particularly in severe asthma that's not controlled even with high doses of inhaled corticosteroids and LABA's long-acting beta agonist. So we wanted to see um, agents that would be effective uh, in, in people with severe asthma that, in spite of in high dose inhaled steroids. One of the agents that's been impressive is Labricmazab. Labricmazab is a monoclonal antibody used in, by injection in patients with asthma. It's been shown, as described in uh, this figure near the bottom of the study, showing that uh, a very significant improvement in the pulmonary function in the FEV1 with labricmazab. But it also showed it worked best in people who had high levels of periostin, whereas in people with low levels of periostin, it didn't seem to do much at all. So it's possible uh, that periostin may be a good biomarker for asthma. Uh, however, in looking at the same study, and this was published in the New England Journal, uh, Jonathan Korn was the first author, but we were involved in the clinical trials of these studies and showed, uh, as reported, there was a 34% decrease in the exhaled breath nitric oxide, which makes that uh, an attractive con candidate as a biomarker because we can measure that in a two-year-old or a 92-year-old. Now, that's one aspect. Another one is, okay, IL-13 seems to be an important mediator in, in asthma. Uh, however, what causes IL-13? We can give one dose intranasally to mice. They'll have the parameters of asthma for seven to 10 days, a single intranasal dose. However, recently there's evidence that IL-13 is increased by IL-33. And IL-33 is part of the innate immune system, or at least coming from the uh, uh, innate uh, lymphoid cells, the uh, IC, I, ILC2. ILC2, and those by two means it has the same as the type two cytokines, IL-4, 5, and 13. So, IL-33 has shown that it will induce um, airway reactivity. What we did was give our mice IL-33, uh, instead of, where IL-13 we use 10 micrograms, with IL-33 we only used 100 nanograms. So, um, and in that model, we can see that IL-30, first of all, this is uh, our, our research protocol here, and we can do 10 mice at a time and measure their uh, airway constriction using the uh, Buxco system. And here you can see the pen H has markedly increased with IL-13, uh, just three days, 72 hours after giving IL-13, you get a, a very significant increase from 0.5 up to about 3.5. How do you think this study will affect patients with asthma in the future? How do we, well, I, th I think the take home message here is that we also need to look at an anti-IL-33. Uh, to my knowledge, I haven't seen any uh, on the, that are, have been studied as yet, or at least I haven't seen any publications on it. But it would seem natural because uh, IL-33 is also because it increases IL-5, so it's going to inhibit the eosinophilia, and it should also inhibit, because it's effect on IL-13, it should uh, inhibit the airway hyper-responsiveness, which is a hallmark of asthma, and inhibit 
the uh, goblet cell mucus production, which is another major factor in asthma. So, now in terms of corticosteroid resistance, both in vivo and in vitro, this is all in vitro on mouse airway smooth muscle and showing the contraction uh, induced by acetylcholine dose response curve or the relaxation with isopaternol, which is a full beta 2 agonist, full beta agonist. And one shows here that if we pretreat the mice with IL-13, then the isopaternol is not able to uh, relax the trachea as much as the control mice. There's a very significant impairment of the effect of the beta agonist following IL-13. Uh, and uh, even if we give fluticasone, a potent corticosteroid, it still is not able to overcome that. Okay. So this is important in cortisone-resistant asthma using a, a mouse model. And to compare that, in vi that's all in vitro, but in vivo, if we look at the PC200, we can see an allergen, in this case ovalbumin, increases airway reactivity, decreases the amount of methacholine to give you a PC200. But a low dose of albuterol uh, brings it almost back to baseline. A higher dose goes way above baseline. And fluticasone is also significantly uh, improves the airway reactivity. In these are all ovalbumin sensitized mice. The combination of this low dose of albuterol plus fluticasone gave you a significant improvement. So that's in contrast to when we treat these mice with IL-13. As you can see by the bar graphs, the IL-13 did increase airway reactivity, but in that in this situation. Salbuterol, sal, salmeterol, and fluticasone was not effective. And then to go to the IL-33 studies, we this is IL-13 here on this date on September 9th. But when we looked at them two weeks later, when IL-13 is wearing off, you can see that the combination of ovalbumin and IL-33 gives you a much greater contraction. Here the uh, pin H is uh, six, so it's more potent. These are three different studies using IL-13, and its effect at this date is considerably less than the IL-33. So that's one of the take-home messages, that IL-33 may be actually uh, the way to go for future clinical studies. Very interesting. Thank you, Dr. Tomlin. Thank you.